no, it's just something small, thoughtful. What we do, or we what we were doing in the past, not really doing that much this this year, being in the apartment. But we would do like you know a gift that oh, we kind of talk up, about. Did, did you apartment shame? But, Was that um, an apartment shame? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the back said, out not- of it. I didn't know the back <laughs> out of it. <laughs> He said, you know, we're not doing much in an apartment. I've been living in an apartment my whole goddamn life. You're now tuned in. You're now tuned in. You are now tuned in. You're now tuned in. You are now tuned in. 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 It's just a position podcast. What's going on, yo? Welcome to episode 25 of the Juxtaposition Podcast, a.k.a. the Extraordinary Nobodies, a.k.a. the Starting Five, a.k.a. the Five Heartbeats, a.k.a. Four Hubbies and the Possible. I'm here with the guy, CEO. Zo. What's goody? Hey, what's going on, y'all? Moneybag, yo, what's goody? What it do, baby? The Chef KV, what's good, bro? <laughs> Everything. What up, though? And Pulpit Poppy, my man. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> Yo, that, that shit is never going to get old yeah, always. Nah, That will always get me Did y'all hear what I said? That, that shit will never get old? Yeah, that's L points L points <laughs> Should've just let it go Should've just let it ride How y'all week been? Good, My week man. been good, man I've been doing Zo, nothing Zo, Zo did the face like It's been alright, but nobody can see him <laughs> yes, uh, I've been off work, though, chilling just kind of relaxed. You off this oh, week? What's up? Oh, you did say well, that last week. Yeah, I got to go back to work Friday, though. Uh, oh, Black Friday right, for the, the man? The worst day. Yeah, I got to work yeah. for the man. I mean, but nobody's going to be bursting the year establishment looking for TVs, so I think you should be No, right. they won't. They won't. <laughs> yeah, they'll be, they'll it be should be a chill day. They're going to want to come get that cash to go get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys <laughs> open all day? Like, from like yeah. regular office? Yeah. Yeah, but till four though, you know, I only work till four. Bankers hours. Oh, that ain't bad. I'm about yeah. to say everybody use everybody <laughs> use them as the barometer for how long they should be open. Oh yeah, today's bankers hours, but like the yeah. bank will be open all day, and then you fucked. Mm-hmm. Right. Till, Wait, uh, that was TV your week, bro. Uh, my week was cool. My week was cool. I have a short week this week for work. Thank God, tomorrow's my last day, and then I'm off Thursday and Friday. Hold on, uh, you, you mean today since it's Friday and it's Black Friday today, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So no work at the end of the week. So my week is great. What did you do? How was your week? Ah uh, man, um, nothing, man, nothing really. I'm just sticking to my schedule, and I'm proud of that, man. I, I said this last week, but I've been getting up at like six thirty, like up, up, like out of bed, getting ready for the mm-hmm. day, and sticking to my schedule. And I've been doing that for the last couple of weeks. It feels great. Feels good. I'm more productive uh, throughout the course of the day because of it. I really feel like it's a uh, paying some dividends. It's giving me. Are some you going energy. to bed earlier too? A little bit. Like, uh, I mean, I never went to sleep late in general, but like ten o'clock, ten thirty, I'm in the bed, ready to go to sleep. Oh, you're an adult. You yeah, are nah, clean and fledged <laughs> like that, yo. Adult. Even when we was roommates, yo, if we wasn't out at no party, clean just like roll over, covers <laughs> over his face, like I'm out. <laughs> Like, bro, I was talking that, to you and everything. I, I'll be out by like 10, 10 30 myself. Yeah, man. Like, I was the one at the sleepovers. Like, if you went over your cousin's house for a sleepover, whoever went to sleep <laughs> first got the water poured on their face. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> I tell them, just do it right now. <laughs> Let me just, just go to sleep. Over with it. <laughs> just yeah. do it right now because I'm going to be first one out. That's funny. It's never that's been real, life. though. That's, that's been your whole life. Just going my whole sleep. life, yo. At a timely, at a timely time. I need my rest. James, how about you? Nah, like I said, it's cool. I ain't haven't done much really, you know. Have off this week, so I go back to work at the end of the week. But right now, as we're recording, I've been off just relaxing and uh, doing nothing basically. I like to do nothing sometimes when you, you know, got a crazy weeks and cut. You know what I mean? It's just Dude. when you got those times to do nothing. No plans. I, I appreciate those time. Those, uh, those times. Doing nothing is fire. It is. I actually really, really enjoy doing nothing, mm-hmm. especially now. I mean, you no. Know. That just season. like uh yeah i mean you know it's like i think as an adult now you look for those mm. moments when you don't have nothing to do yeah because uh, every so. day is something to do mm-hmm. even on days there's nothing that's to do fact. you can find something it's all you that's a fact it's i feel like if we don't have anything to do we're probably neglecting something like yeah. oh, the energy right. the energy you put in a certain direction but you're just like you know what let me just take it easy today because mm-hmm. it's important Shavey, how about you though kev Week's been great. Uh, just uh, you know, smoothing in, 
to what was expected to be a Thanksgiving holiday or with family, a time spent with family, but um, mm-hmm. that kind of got canceled for the idea of uh, safety and health for everybody. So it, it's uh, changed, changed plans up a little bit. Now it's kind of like, well, you know, we were gearing up to plan for this thing and now that's not really so much of the thing. It's just kind of like, well, all right, we get to do nothing now. Get to just show yes yeah. vibe. But it's all good though. Everything has come along. Like uh everything's coming full circle this time around. And uh just a good week. You know, like I could I could kind of like feel Cleveland a little bit. Like I've been kind of like spot popping but out of the bed at a certain time. And I like the way that feels too. Like I started uh, just getting my mind right by reading first. Um mm-hmm. And I and I like it. I like the way that feels. I like the way I think. God, I like you're the way, so mature, like, yo. <laughs> maturity. I, I, I haven't have it this week. I haven't done it this week. I actually finished that uh, that book I was telling you I was reading. Um, a word. Congrats, yeah, yeah. bro. Auto auto autobiography of Malcolm, which was a, a great a great read. I haven't read oh, that's it. That's heavy I too. Recommend it. It's interesting, man. It's kind of like it brings things to light in so many different ways, but. It's a great read. I'm looking for something else to read. So if you got any, you got anything for me? Let me know. Well, Obama. I just got the something. Obama book. I just got yeah. in the mail that, today. That's so. that's heavy too. Heavy. That book, thing like is seven hundred pages. That book heavy. That book Word. is heavy, heavy. boy. I ain't pick. cracked one page of it. I started reading like the first two pages of the um, wow preface. Uh, yeah, preface. There, I was about to call it a prequel, but the the preface. <laughs> the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, Kev, will you be living up to your name this holiday and uh, getting in the kitchen and going crazy? That was the plan. The plan was, you know, last year we kind of did it up low key, but I was like an experiment okay. to see if, like, uh, okay, can I bring some more folks around for this? Okay, you okay, know? okay. <laughs> we felt good about it. We felt like we, we could share and get show. Uh, but, like, you know, obviously what's going on, that's not going to happen. But we still plan to, like, make our favorite meals so okay we'll probably get into the kitchen tomorrow morning sometime. that's fire yeah that's fire so how about you um the week was all right um it's kind of flat just trying to get things organized i uh i suppose been having some good luck after the other week when that bird shit on my shoulder <laughs> And uh, <laughs> instead, I freaking like strained my hamstring playing football in the mud. So I've been going to physical therapy all week, um, just trying to get myself back. And then um, just getting ready for, you know, the holiday, organizing, scheduling, stuff like that, regular stuff. Um, you know, I've had more of a frustrating week. Uh, I feel like this is the week where nobody want to do their job. Oh, man. Okay. So no, no, no. That's, a, that's actually don't, a fact. Don't be talking yeah, about. Don't be. Don't be bringing up people's companies in your in in, in, in your conversation. Listen, I was don't at James' job. <laughs> I was at James' job, but I wasn't at his actual location. I was in Brooklyn <laughs> yesterday, and it's just like they ain't want to work. Like they all looking like, like they tell them, "Oh, you got to stand over here, stand over here." They don't even have the line organized. Like we all six feet, but y'all moving people so much. That now we all up on top of each other. Like they don't know what they're doing. Hey, hey, come on, man. Black bankers matter, man. Relax. <laughs> yeah, well, they acting like they did. My money ain't matter because all I wanted was my dad on money. And then the lady, you know, got wait for authorization. She wanted to talk to somebody who I almost hit her with the Martin because it was somebody who was repeating themselves. And I was getting frustrated listening to this person listen to them. <laughs> and I wanted it, like, remember Martin was in the unemployment office and he, he said, Mush the nigga to death, like man with the two braids, you ain't talking about nothing. <laughs> <With the two laughs> <brain. laughs> like, like, get the hell out of the way. Like, I was about to do that. Like, you ain't even talking about nothing. Get the hell out of the way. Like, I need this lady real quick. So that was me. Like, I was just getting frustrated with it was raining. People act like they can't drive deck, like it's glass falling. I just it was just James, a bit much. Did you want to uh step up for your people or no? I mean, you know, everything is every situation is different. There could okay. be a reason, rhyme reason for what they were doing. You know, this is this is the second week. This is the second week in a row. This is the second week in a row that Alonzo was coming for something James related. Last week it was his car, and now this oh, yeah, week right this is established. I, so. I was complimenting. I just said, you know, I, I'm not really a Star Wars person, so I ain't really know into <laughs> spaceships and shit. Like, that's all. Oh man. Nah, oh, it do be. Oh, it, it is kind of crazy though. Sometimes when. 
you know, like someone will call, come into your your place of work and they don't really know how they, uh, things operate, mm-hmm. but you're doing things a certain way for a reason, but they can't see it. But in their mind, mm-hmm. if it's not the way they think it's supposed to go, it it's all wrong. wrong and it's crazy and this and that. See, but that's, that's the thing. Probably, I'm a vet at this one. You know what I mean? This is just because I'm oh, all, they I, was new. Yeah, yeah. Right? They, they was, was they ain't know because all right. So let me do I know the old time. ways. This yeah. is not the old ways. Listen, oh, and, yo, where, where's Susan? Susan wouldn't treat me like this. Where yo, you, you must like, be new here. I'm like the white dude to call the one black friend just for verification. Like I'll call James, like, yo, this is supposed to happen this way. Because I know this ain't right. James, like, eh, maybe. Nah, but this was the ice. When you when shit is moving slow and people taking their time, and then the person doing twelve verifications needs to ask me for my social. I'm like, bro, I gave you my ID. You sent me the the text to verify with the code. What else you need? Like, I just oh, must have been going there take, trying to take out a band, boy. Uh, Come on, see, right here. What's your chain? All I know is that I had to get my, what my money, and he asked me for too many forms of ID. I thought I was gonna prick my finger for blood, and then <laughs> why get a COVID taking, test for your brain? Exactly. Why he taking all slow? I'm like, is everything okay? I'm asking him through the. Mind you, this yeah. is New York. They got glass, so it ain't no yeah. easy talk. I gotta talk through the damn thick plexiglass. So then he going while he's typing all slow. He gonna sit up there. <laughs> he gonna sit up there. The, his phone rang and his cell his cell phone rang and I see him stop, look at his phone. And I, that's when I almost lost it. Like nigga, oh, bitch, no, I would have been tight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, nah, not supposed to be on the phone. Yeah, he gonna phone look at shouldn't the phone. even be out on the table, dog. And I you know, and you know how New York parking is. So it's I like, was very frustrated yo. trying to get in that bitch. <laughs> I came there with an attitude, but I'm okay though. I, 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 all in all, for the week. <laughs> <laughs> now Thank we definitely you. heard worse stories from Zoe. Yes, his week. that was this like ain't that bad. So my week was pretty cool. Oh, before I get into my week, uh, James, I seen your 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 post about you and your lady wanting to uh, help the less fortunate. Were you able? Anybody oh, contact yes. you? So no, not not in the sense how I wanted them to, man. And, and... <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't have done for you. Yeah, is, is, no, what is, like I didn't want mean? my because I, so I had one family member hit me up, oh, and I'm like, okay, okay so whatever. Back. No, no, so I'm like, I right, whatever. Jay but I knew what the situation was because it's my family. So mm-hmm. I was like, I'll help out regardless. Tell me what you need for the Thanksgiving. So you know, she was letting me know. So I was trying to figure out how to get it. So I was going to drive it to to uh, Passaic, but I was like, ah, don't really have time. Asked if she had cash app or anything, nothing like that. I was like, all right, I'll Instacart over the phone. Just tell me what you need. I'll put an Instacart, have it delivered to your house. So she started telling me some things. I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. But then she started to get into stuff that was had nothing to do James with James, like, you don't need that. <laughs> Yo, it was like, like oh, wait, okay. like charms. Like a lamp. Load up. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I'm like, all right, whatever. But um, I still was looking for like, we like we two or three families, you know, we wanted to buy all the groceries mm. for a Thanksgiving meal, whatever they normally would buy. Uh, we wanted to buy it all, like the entire yeah. like menu. And we haven't had anyone like hit us up though. That's Well, first of all, that's a fire and amazing gesture. I've seen it. And I was Definitely. like, yeah, I gotta, that's, that's, you don't see people like everyday folks uh, like doing that. And I think we probably had the capability to do so. So shout out to you and your wife for that. But it's also strange that like, I feel like we often hear about people who need more, but I guess when mm-hmm. you put the call to action out, nobody hits you. That's kind of like, damn. That is yeah, I was it like, you know, pride, 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 yeah. pride, man. Okay. Pride kills. Okay. It's possible. I mean, but there, I mean, there has to be people that know somebody that True. like, even if it was just something like, maybe they got some things, but they cut back on their meal, you know what I mean? And they, they can't get everything that they want. Like, we I mean, if you want to pay for my there. shit, I ain't yeah, nobody paying for your uh, <laughs> Since you offer it, <laughs> I could use a good reimbursement for groceries right now. <laughs> but we were like, trying to establishment I mean, James stimulus. We were definitely trying, and we were, I mean, I'm like, probably was expecting like two, three hundred dollars per person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in the real world, it's Friday, but like, also, 
I hope people do hit you up. At least at least one person you can kind of I hope you know, so. Get your tags right off. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, put me out there like that. Though. Terrible. <laughs> you know he's keeping it like, right. Yeah, listen. It's like genuine, James LLC. James LLC. Is, yes. It is a tax write off though, but uh, that's but it is still genuine though. Yeah, I know. I know. We, we, <laughs> a genuine <laughs> discount. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um but getting into my week my week was my week was cool i let people i told y'all last week that i told my job this week don't look for me uh, <laughs> i ain't come here to work <laughs> <laughs> i i'm gonna be here but like i ended up doing like a good bit of work uh on monday and tuesday honestly more than i expected to do um but this week has been spent like preparing and this is if you're hearing this on black friday that means the pre-orders for my chanel hoodies have dropped i've been waiting for this for a minute super Hello. happy that they're finally going to be out um but this week is really spent working on the brand uh, i told y'all a few times that i've been obsessing over growth what that means social media strategy and stuff and this is like a whole new language yo like it's none of this stuff is something that you can just stumble into some people just get big and go viral and that's the thing but the sustainability of trying to have an audience is intricate. It's pretty intricate, especially yeah. virtually not being in person. Like you can mm-hmm. kind of quantify and see what you got going on, what your movement looks like if you're in person. But you really can't call people together on the internet and be like, yo, let's let's hang. It's like, no. Mm-hmm. It's like, just it's, weird, right? Yeah, it's just... So trying to find the audience and find like A... Who am I talking to? B, who am I selling to? Mm -hmm. And what type of story do I construct around the brand? Is it me? Is it what I want the brand to represent? So those things are in flight. But I am excited that I'm getting a chance to launch my first big product. Um, So looking forward to that. See what happens there. Yeah, these hats are coming. Where where can they? 2021. Where can they get it on Friday? They can go to www. F A U N T L E R O Y dot store, S T O R E. So Fontleroy dot store. Support black um, business. Yes, black yes. I'm black. I'm black and I kind of <laughs> own the business. So support. <laughs> um, other than that, Justice League, need, y'all to let, need to let y'all know this is the last episode of season one. Episode 25. Breaking news. Episode, Breaking news. episode 25. Last season, last episode in the season. We're going to get back to you first week in January. So, you know, there's plenty of content to go around. Uh, if you please go to our, our YouTube page, juxtaposition.pod. Also, our Instagram page, juxtaposition.pod. And we have plenty of clips. We'll be continuing to put clips that you haven't seen. Uh, old content from before we was actually recording, recording all those things. We're going to be providing you some some uh, behind the scenes stuff, so you'll have enough content to go to go by. But we are going to be taking our uh, our little winter hiatus so we can get back to y'all bigger and better in season two. Definitely. Um, so the question of the week that I have for you all is: with the holiday season approaching. Um, I'm not sure how it is in your house in terms of how gifts are given or insinuated. So it's always said that men give bad gifts, right? Y'all heard that before, right? I've not heard us. it. I don't subscribe. I get fire gifts. I get fire yeah. gifts. I was about to say, my gifts are bomb. Um, but for your lady, do y'all do the, here's a list. I need a list in order to get your gift. Or do you try to fill in the gaps to see what she don't have and you fill in that blank? Which which side of the of the script you on? The filling on. the gaps is coming becoming harder and harder because yeah. <laughs> they get everything already. They get everything. That I I was telling y'all I have uh, Amazon packages delivered to my house every other Cha-ching. day. I, no, I gotta remi- m- remind my wife it doesn't mean free. Prime doesn't mean free. Like <laughs> just so fast, it's not free. Goods. Yeah, it's just fast. Oh, whose <laughs> who's card? Whose card is on Amazon? It's joint. It could be coming out the joint. Like, so we, you know, you we have, we have like, we put most of our money in the joint, though, in her defense. Like, we only keep a little bit of a little something for ourselves, but most of our money. A little, ice, little ice cream money on the side. A little ice cream money, a little extra milk money. I can get extra milk at lunch, extra chocolate. Milk. <laughs> Nothing major, though. But yeah, man, she gets, she gets the stuff that she pretty much wants. So it's, it's hard to hit her with the surprise and fill in the gaps right now. It's harder, but I still yeah. do it. I'm still doing it, but it's it's difficult. 
Yeah. How about the I rest of that? It's tough, man. I mean, I, I like to be a fill in the gaps type of person. I like to surprise. I like to get something that you weren't thinking that I that I thought about. Mm-hmm. But I, I never back away from you just telling me either. Like you just want to <laughs> let me know. <laughs> that's, that's exactly where I'm going. Like I am not Please, a, make I'm it not clear. A I'm not a fill in the gap. Look. Tell me what you want. What you want? All right. And I'll let you know that nah, that ain't working. All right, next one. Nah, uh, I think I might be able to do that one. I might. Nah, do you at least nah. wrap the gift, Jane? Jane, like, not nah, here. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I mean, I'm joking, but I'm not joking. So I would prefer that. <laughs> Serious joke. But um, I also like last year. Um, I got something that I I knew she kind of wanted, but then I also like try to do something small but thoughtful. You know what I mean? Oh, you bought her, so you like, bought her that second property last year, right? <laughs> you bought her a rancher, one floor that, joint. That, 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 that property, I just that got the range the for you know the small oh, okay, little fault. range over. You know, my let fault. me stop. My no, sudden light. Anyway, <laughs> now I just something small, thoughtful. What we do, or we what we were doing in the past, not really doing that much this this year, being in the apartment. But we would do like you know a gift that oh, we kind of talk you, about. Did, did you apartment shame? But, Was that um, an apartment shame? Don't do that. <laughs> I didn't know the back out of it. I didn't know the back out of it. He said, you know, we're not doing much in an apartment. I've been living in an apartment the whole no, goddamn no. life. No, no. So it's this. So the reason is that we don't want this apartment to feel like home, if you will. Right? We don't want it to feel gotcha. permanent. So we're not really doing much. Like We don't even have pictures hanging up on a wall. We, we purposely don't want it to feel permanent. I get that. Um, but we would do like a stock and stuff. So the small gift, we would just put in the stock and that'd be mm-hmm. like the surprise. But anything else, we kind of know we're going to get each other. Is most of your stuff in storage? No, we gave most of it away. Oh, because you we okay. just kept okay, that also the makes small sense. things that we needed for the apartment, but everything else we gave away. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's the, I know you were looking. Are you, you have a, 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 I guess, the timeline of when you are actually going to secure something again? Um, no, there's no time frame. Uh, we still got to kind of pinpoint where we're going to live. That's the hardest part right now. Mm. Y'all going to be in Burlington with Zoe and Chris. <laughs> I mean, Everybody it's possible, yeah. I'm it's on my possible way. that we might end up in Jackson. Oh, wow. In there too. Yeah. I'm about to make James buy my parents' crib. You about to have... <laughs> You, that would be fire because I have a place to stay. When I, I, come could, home. I couldn't do that though. I couldn't do that. Like, just, I just want James. Yeah. I want like James that's... to buy a house so I can. I don't got to pay for hotels when I come back to, to Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Between uh, Zoe and James, hurry up! I just need some place close to a train station. Mm-hmm. The thing is, it's like so. It's going to be some sacrifice there, mm-hmm. but the sacrifice only comes if we can get exactly or very uh, close to what we want. Mm-hmm. When, I'm not going to sacrifice that if it's going to be all oh, later on down the line we can do this this and that. no right so so you don't you're not going to uh, make that 25 minute drive for no house less than a million got you yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say that <laughs> so how about you which one are you are you the fill in the blanks or are you like give me a list I started off as a fill in the blank um, yeah, I, I want to hear yours because you've been married for some time so like yeah, I want to yeah. see with the with the with the look forward to. I mean, I'm it a possible, did, but yeah, it I, I like it depends. So it's like, I think it's like a seasonal thing. So like depending on and when I mean seasonal, like is it anniversary? Is it birthday? Mm. Is it Mother's nah, just Christmas? Day? Okay, so for Christmas, we the last couple of years we've like agreed to instead of like buying each other gifts, we're like yo, let's go somewhere or do something. Like that uh, was our okay because we have okay. kids, so it's like we gonna spend all the money on them Negroes, and it's right. like, right? Let's just, even though I didn't listen twice, two years in a row, although we agreed not to get each other gifts, I she really see, didn't get me shit. But I'm about to say, see, this is, I got, I got to make a hold on, Zoe. This is something I've been telling Zoe about since we've been friends. Like, yo, Zoe is like one of the best friends you could ever have. He does things above and beyond, mm. and then he don't expect, but when when that person don't go at least halfway the way he did. Like, yo, fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> like, yo, yo, bar, bar shit started so good, yo, the compliment. I'm like, keep going, keep going. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right, though. Damn, that is me. 
He like, no. nah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to hold it down. It's like, yo, she ain't even give me no cardio. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't that mad, though, because she was mad at me. Like, you, you, we freaking agreed that we wasn't going to get nothing. I'm like, but you know that is like a one-sided rule. Like, if I actually did that, all hell that's break true. loose. So I, but I did do some extra shit. Did we? That's when I wound up getting her the iPhone 11 when it first mm. dropped. So whatever okay. one came out. I did it two years later. The 10 came out. I got her that. And then a year or two later, I did it again where we was like, oh, we supposed Ash. to go here. And then <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not doing that. I can't do that payment plan shit. So once, because <laughs> it bothers me to look at the bill high. Like, Yo, I, know, I feel you there. I know. Get on my that nerves. extra money oh. in there. My bill well, like seventy dollars and now it's one twenty. Yeah, I'm mean? like, oh yeah, I financed the whole phone like shit. <clears throat> Yo, so. my barber said that he went to try to like buy the phone outright. I don't know what Apple store he went to, but he was there was like, no, nah, we don't do that no more. <laughs> like, <Damn. what? laughs> they want that interest. What? That's disrespectful. I never even is there even interest on those? Like, I don't think no, so. No, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know where he mm -hmm. going, but yeah. Uh, and for pretty much to summarize, like we'll usually just agree on something. We'll say it like, see, the thing is, I get hit back to back because her birthday in November and then Christmas. Oh, so I see. would have already bought something like weeks prior. See, that's me. Her birthday in October. I feel like I just got the gift of the year for her birthday. Now I'm looking like uh, Danny Dumbface around uh, Christmas. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm one of those folks that like I'm I'm a fill in the blanks person too. I really think that I give really good gifts, but I also like I'm one of those I'm like maybe like December 15th or December 12th, I'll be like, all right, I got it. Because right now I'm flat out of ideas. I don't have no ideas. Mm -hmm. Like every gap that there was, it's not a gap anymore. So now I Yo, be just creative. be creative with some bread. Like let's say if you had a max dollars, right, that you was gonna spend. Let's say mm -hmm. I ain't going over this number and you really had no freaking idea. One mm. year I did, I just put- Just make just make origami out of dollars? You could do that or the little dollar <laughs> tree, the little tree, the little money tree. Or um, I did a combination of like one of them dollar store money trees that like you put on somebody's desk, like in the cubicle mm -hmm. or something like that. I put like maybe like a hundred, but like make it look like a lot. We get like a couple of singles or whatever. Oh, whatever. Okay. Make it look like to fill up the tree. And then I literally had a whole bunch of, I like wrapped the dollars in wrapping paper and then mm -hmm. just put mad different ones under the tree. And then just kept giving them to them like another 50. Oh, oh that's, that's dope. dope. Yeah. And, it, and it ended up being like 350. Yeah, something <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but, like, but it seemed like dope. so much and it was just still exciting there. So I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> Cause I was top. Yeah, I was like, I ain't know what the fuck good. I ain't know. Yo, that's good. fun. She, y'all seen the wood, right? Y'all all seen the mm -hmm. wood. Yeah. So you know the they pot. had the the pussy pot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. I just, just said give, the pot. <laughs> just give just give your girl four pussy pots, <laughs> full the of money. Box pot. <laughs> the box yeah, pot. That's, that's it. Yeah. What's, make sure you, I got it. now. That does guarantee you're supposed to get some bots after that. <laughs> See, that's what there's, there you go. I'm about to say there you go. He, he need it back, so I'm gonna return. <laughs> oh, Listen, man, everything is. I gave you the cash, so you give me the. What are you saying, Cleveland? <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, what's what's the best gift you you got for your significant other? The like, what's the like she got on her hand, or like has gotten the best reaction? <laughs> the damn ring she got on her hand. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay, that's, that's but bad. outside the ring, outside the ring. <laughs> nah, that's cheating. He like, nah, that's the best one. What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's a given, though. Yeah, that's a good question. I just, I just mm -hmm. gave mine. I bought her a, a computer, a MacBook, because she also has a podcast mm -hmm. and she be doing the edits and all that. And her computer was like, "Hey, yo, my man, you're doing too much." And she's like, "Nah, I got, <laughs> I got to get it done." And and you know how when you buy something, you ride it out. Like, let's say you, you bought your car. Like, this is your shit. This is like, y'all been through to war together. And mm -hmm. then when your car starts breaking down, you're like, yo, my man, come on. Come on, baby. Come that's on, how I baby. felt that's, about that's... my 94 Honda Accord. That's exactly how I felt. The odometer stopped working, bro. I did not want to get a <laughs> yo, car. The odometer stopped? It just stopped moving. Damn. I kept driving it for like a whole year. You rubbing the dashboard like, yo, please, please. <laughs> just keep thinking. <laughs> when that thing broke down, it broke down. I was like, all right. I got my money's worth. Yeah, like you know how when you when you turn when your car breaks down and you turn over and you like there's no hope. Yeah, you're like, oh nah, this this is this is over. I this is over, feeling. Chief. How about you, Cleveland? What's your what's your best one that you've given? My best one is at my wedding. 
is when I did the the gift. Each groomsman brought a gift. Oh, that's on I the forgot hours about that. Leading up that to the wedding, that was that like was that was probably the best. Uh, specifically because it w- it was all small, but it was all stuff that she really really liked, like the the teapot, the teacup, yeah, yeah, all of that stuff was like stuff she's really into. So I think that was I the forgot best, about that. The best you reaction I got. Fucking romantic, you. <laughs> Yo, that the picture book. That's the drink that got the tears. One of y'all brought the. I don't know which one of y'all. I was a teapot it. guy. I was. I was, was Mr. Teapot, teapot guy. short and stout. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like the one thing that I don't know if I was supposed to do, I'm, I get real awkward. So I gave her the teapot, mm-hmm. and I like. I was like, should I stay? <laughs> should I report, should I report <laughs> I the emotion? Do I leave? Do I go? <laughs> I, I did want emotion? to know what the emotion was though. <laughs> I'm like, did I did I hit it or no? But yeah, that's I mean, the, clearly you did. But you I'm about to say, married, ain't that how you? Yeah. <laughs> the pumping pie. <laughs> <laughs> that's so the pumping pie. That's my fault. If y'all, okay. if y'all follow us on Instagram, uh, I put a graphic up about last week's episode, and instead of pumpkin pie, I put pumping pie. So <laughs> pumping, pumping. As far as mine was somewhere else. Clearly, it was an error. It was an error. <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> This episode called Pumpkin Pie. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think, like, what's the best gift? I can't remember. We've been together so long. I would and... probably say one of the iPhones or something. Like, I mean, that's, that's the valid. gift that keeps on giving. You're always on it. You you get the most usage out of it. Like, but I know you like yo. Who you texting on our phone? <laughs> nah, our phone. Nah, <laughs> maybe maybe ten years ago I probably would have been like that. <laughs> now, now I'm like, shoot, please go over there with your phone, please. I'm trying to watch. It. Did you did you buy her car? Who? Ooh. James, did you buy her uh, car? No. <laughs> you look at the, the face is like oh, I would James, never you don't but pay you the would. car no? <laughs> no, I don't pay that car. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I guess I get that one then. Cause oh, I definitely yeah. been paying that car note. I don't think my wife knows what the car note is. Nah. <laughs> I don't think she knows how much and nothing. Like she just like um a light came on. Okay, it's, it's working. Yeah, I take these little keys that you gave me this one time. Like, uh, you can have this. Yeah, I, yeah. That, if you count that, the car, but that wasn't like a holiday or Christmas or nothing. No, nah, he just said gift in general. Oh yeah. Oh, I, mean, I guess the Christmas? last one I can remember, I got a, the the red bottoms of the Julia <laughs> Vuitton. Ch- <laughs> Less than that damn uh, MacBook you got. Uh huh. Oh Don't shit. Talk- <laughs> right. Oh, <no. laughs> He can't start with a MacBook and then throw it in the chain. I'm early. It's so crazy because the early. brand you hear Louis V, you think it's so something crazy, but the fact that something we use like a MacBook is really more expensive. Mm-hmm. Y'all both yeah. said y'all both said Louis V. You mean Christian Louboutin? Christian Louis Vuitton, yeah. Whatever. I don't buy it, so I don't need to know. <laughs> I, said <it>. red <laughs> I don't need to know it. Uh, I mean, one year what I did was this is before we were like officially officially dating. I uh, took a picture that we we took together and uh, I made a card out of it and I wrote mm. in the card. So it was like the picture was like us or the card was like a picture of us. It was like a card mm. and um forgot where I found it. forgot how I thought about doing that. But it was probably like one, of it, like, you know, when you think about it, in hindsight, I'm sure, you know, all the gifts you get, you don't really remember. But I just remember that was like the most simple gift that I gave. And that can, that's mm. why I remember that was probably like, probably the best gift that I probably gave. And I remember actually her girl was telling her that I'm, I'm a keeper. I remember that. I remember oh, that. okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Those that's are the winners right there. Those yeah, are the winners. Like the real thoughtful joints are, are yeah. the winners. Nah, son, that's a fact. Back in the days when like the resources wasn't wasn't crazy, you had to dig in, in, in that creativity bag yeah. heavy. You ain't heavy, man. Be that, those be, those be the best gifts grab. though, man. No, for real. You kind of want to want to get back to that every now and then because you know yeah. what? That's what we sh- that's what that's what's going on. Yeah, she a fifteen dollar thoughtful gift, fifteen dollars. There you smart go, man. Gift. Smart man. There you go, and then buy somebody kids who who can't afford a gifts for Christmas. Buy them some gifts for Christmas. I mean, exchange. Maybe whoever, I thought you was just saying expensive gifts with each other. No. <laughs> if somebody willing to sell, times ain't that hard. Hopefully. She's want to sell me your baby? Hey man, we all bought kids around <laughs> tax time. We all purchased some kids around tax time. <laughs> all right, so just keep the ball for Zo knows. All right, so here we go. So Zo knows. I would like to say 
to the public, finally, we have some type of, I wouldn't say closure, but we're gearing in that direction with this daggone eight-week election. Sheesh. Um, so Michigan certified their votes. They have a three-to-one they have voted. So they're going to uh, confirm and accept all those votes that this fool has been trying to uh, contest. Uh, what is he like one for 39 out of all the lawsuits and everything that he's been trying yeah, to Yeah, he won in 30, I think. Yeah, something ridiculous. Um, the lady Emily Murphy, the head of the GSA, the General Service Ad- Administration, finally is like, okay, we can now um ha- have the transition team and they're going to give six six point three million to the Biden transition team. Yo, can we pause for two seconds? Why is it money involved for a and transition? Out? And maybe it's so, the security deposit. <laughs> <laughs> to live Dang, in a white a house. You know how that house. security be killing niggas, right? Oh, you know, you know that shit be whooping ass. You gotta get the two months or one month plus. That used to be the worst. No. It's like, nah, I'm people gotta get paid. That, that's yeah, where the money budgets. comes from. The yeah. staff yeah. Budgets. gotta get okay. paid. Yeah. Um, and if the government, if they don't sign that document. Uh, you can't use government money to pay the people, so they got to get paid somehow. Mm, and so. that's why they was asking for money, because they like, well, we got to start vetting the people that we want to nominate for our cabinet members. And someone has to do that, and they have to go out to different places and talk to people, and this and that, and you got to pay for all that stuff. Mm, mm. Okay. And they need money. You've seen the memes, like, so we got to pay for new president now? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, next we have this is sad for me. 2020 is really effing with people. And we lost the first and only black mayor in New York, David Dinkins. Um, he died at 93 years old, and his wife actually passed last month. So I know oh, it's wow. so crazy. They usually Jeez. say, like, when you're that old, you know, one spouse, then the next one shortly mm-hmm. after. I didn't yeah. know it was gonna be that short, but um, I actually was fortunate enough to meet David Dinkins when I was, I want to say like six years old. I was going yo, to ha- huh? He's a fly guy, yo. Every oh, time yeah. you see him, super fly. Chill. Super smooth. Fly. Just everything. And he, uh, I was going at the time, Abyssinia Baptist Church in Harlem. And he came and my parents met him upstairs. I was downstairs in Sunday school. And then he came downstairs and like all the kids shook his hand, everything. You know, he did a little speech, but in layman's terms for us to understand as little mm. kids, like y'all could be what y'all want to be, that kind of speech mm-hmm. and just work hard. So I was fortunate enough to um, to meet him years ago. And I was just like, dang, like we lost David Dinkins. Like meanwhile, I, I don't know. I don't want to sound crazy and this might lead to kind of the topic, but I'm just tired of the people who ain't supposed to be gone leaving and the people who we, I don't want to say wish, but some people do need to just remotely leave. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need to be here. Like, you got just, Giuliani just walk your, around. Just, just put your pink slip in, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, two weeks. you got Giuliani over here having Jerry his Beijing, juice. Yeah. His, his Beijing, Beijing running. dripping. And over here, uh, did y'all see the, the napkin? The blow he blew his nose in the napkin mm-hmm. and yeah, the reverse fold. Yeah, see, James, see, yo, uh, I'm gonna send it to y'all. Yo, they like see. wiped his face with it and so, stuff, yeah, like that's so, the snot part. Yes, so you know, wait, 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 uh, describe yes. this to me. I need I'm gonna, look, I'm gonna describe it to you, right? Okay, so let's say you blow uh-huh. your nose in the tissue, right? Right, you go like this, you blow your nose, right? You what folded you, it outward, like this, right? You folded it outward. And then and was like to this. wipe his face, and then oh. was like, <laughs> was like oh, wow. disgusting. Yo, it was crazy. Yes, not on your I face, never bro. seen, and then you know he didn't shit with the Beijing anything. juice with the, with the, with the pot with <laughs> yes. the pot liquor. He had to get the pot the, liquor. On the yeah, side, the pot liquor. The, the pot liquor is coming his from his face. face. The Carlos Boozer. <laughs> That's wild, yo. Yo, if when you see it, it's so disgusting, bro. You're gonna be like, this is I can't even believe. Yo, when I seen it, I was like, is this an edit? Like, nah. I thought it was added at first. Nah, I mean, there's no way that this crazy. can be real, but then you think. Yo, here's the strange about? thing. Here's a really strange thing. I don't want to go, I don't want to have a deep dive about this. But the people that have been celebrated in American history for doing really amazing things are people like Giuliani. Like, he ran New York and had the respect of these so many millions of people around the world. And he's a dipshit, son. Like, he. 
like i don't how what like Exactly. People, what? What? People like you really don't worry like for it. looked there up. No words, yeah. There is none. That's why the best words is he should be gone. Period. Uh, you owe. You served your time. You did what remotely. You to do. <laughs> remotely. <laughs> like so sometimes cool. we just gotta reset. Like we can't clear house. It's like throwing out yeah, old yeah. clothes. Drink that Beijing <laughs> juice, baby. Drink that yeah, Beijing, so Beijing juice. That was a two for one. We talked about one mayor and led to the other one. Um, but yeah, sad RIP David Dinkins 2020 still roll. We got one month left. Can we just nobody a black hero died, please? Like, I'm tired. Like, can we just everybody stay in hot inside? Yeah, 2020 has been mm-hmm. rough, it's been crazy. And we are right. like for us more so because I feel like we lost way more heroes or people that was like near and dear John Thompson, like just people we like, dang, like I forgot. You know, I forgot also died Regis Philbin. I don't know if it was this year or not, but Regis, I think Regis it might died this year. Yeah, it might have yeah. been earlier in the year. Was it? Prior to COVID know. and then Alex Trebek. Just people that was instrumental to our upbringing, like yeah, yeah. it's just crazy. Meanwhile, uh, what's his name? Chuck Woolery is out here and still, still look like he 30. Oh uh, yeah, he's got the fountain of youth. That's the dude from the um the love connection. Oh, it's a Pat right? Sajak. My fault. Pat Sajak. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, Chuck Woolery is the love connection dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where I'm pulling Chuck Woolery <laughs> yeah, from. I don't know so. how you knew that. That's from Class Act. Remember that? Chuck Woolery. <laughs> Chuck Woolery. <laughs> <laughs> <Class act. laughs> Yo, I always think about that Martin episode where uh, Chris Rock was on there and he had to go on a date with Shanae. They was on love oh, connection. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's he said. Super, he didn't want to supersize it. He was too cheap on the date. He wanted to buy no uh up, upgrade the, the drink. But uh yeah. And lastly, for the hip hop community, and more so just everybody in general, yeah. There was a uh, interesting versus battle over the weekend. Uh very classic uh yeah. Gucci Mane versus Young Jeezy. The Why snow you say just, Mane like that. Gucci Mane. That's how you spell it. Mane, that's how you spell it. Gucci <laughs> Mane. Know. That's how you say it. You got to put the accent on. But uh, that was an interesting one because the classics, they got countless hits. I feel like Gucci should have focused on playing more of his actual popular hits. Um, no, nah, I was scared. Well, that's what I'm about to get to. I, like, was, I was, I was, nah, yeah. It was a tense versus battle, right? It was super mm-hmm. tense. Uh, them being in the same room, the beef, anybody who knows the history um, between the two. It was just it's real history. Was on edge. Yeah. Everybody was just on edge. People died. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Were murdered. That kind of deal. So S- self defense. So they yeah. said. I mean, it is what it is, but it was just super tense. And then uh uh Gucci kept walk, he was pacing a little too much for me. I'm like, yo, he looked like he about to just get up and do that. I don't trust people who just can't sit still. Like. It's a little weird. Yo, I heard somebody mention that like uh it's you know how when you are like posturing, like if you in that in that battle, Jeezy, if you were to just look at like body language, Jeezy was sitting down, he was comfortable. Not not but you see comfortable. Other people see like what they may call like beta mentality. This is not me making this is what other people are saying. Jeezy wasn't making eye contact with Gucci. Gucci was facing Jeezy's direction the whole time. He was. Mm-hmm. Did it did two diss records to start looking at his direction? He rapped the diss song 15 feet from him, right? Mm-hmm. So I think Gucci was worried about more. Gucci had more presence. And Jeezy obviously is like, he's not he, he's not tripping off of this shit, like the, the animosity anymore. So it, it was like old versus new. It's like clearly Jeezy has evolved. And Gucci, like, I gotta get this shit off my off my chest. Before we really bury the hatchet, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, he definitely had to. He said that in some of the interviews. I looked at a couple of Jesus interviews, and he was like, "I'm not gonna let that man take me back to right 20, 15 Can't get years." Tricked ago. out your spot, hey, yo, G, yo, Gucci was so serious about it that he even corrected him on the time frame. He said, "Man, you still talking about that twenty years ago?" He's like, "It was 15. 15. <laughs> 15. Not that long." <laughs> Yo, I was like, yo, man. The, but that was the pivotal moment of the battle when when Jeezy was just like, yo, hold up. I reached out to you as a man and just kind of spun things around. That was literally a pivotal moment in the battle because it did right. kind of seem like Jeezy was like being a little too passive uh, with some of the stuff that was going on. You was kind of thinking like, yo, he ain't clapping back. He ain't saying not much back. 
And then at that point, it was like, okay, I realized what he was trying to do. He was really trying to like piece Keep things up. Yeah. yeah. Well, really, it seemed like he wanted to really piece things up. Like he didn't really want the beef to still exist as it was. So when he gave that little speech and then went into the to the other track or whatever, I think it was needed. Because I felt like some of the tension released after he said that, too, because I was watching. I was like, yo, this ain't good. This ain't going to end well. I was even texting y'all to to that same effect. Like, I don't know how this going to end. But yeah, he said somebody said Juicy Fiance was in the background. Shazam and his songs. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, I really was thinking that, too. Yo, a lot of those songs brought me back to we was on on five. Yeah. 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 that whole album it's, boy especially yeah, that, especially icy icy was when we was on our way like yeah, icy used to be in the it was like before things got real we was like driving to i don't know playing field or something to uh to have a bible garage. study yeah <laughs> to, <laughs> to have, have a bible study. study in the garage yeah. yeah no but you know every time i hear that icy song i oh it always drives me nuts because in around that time in the beginning before things got real Remember, I was at Ryder. Remember, like, even in the summer session, too, I, I lived on campus, right, after I, like, left the crib. Oh, you're getting real specific. Now, nah, listen, because <laughs> you remember Andre, the basketball player, the big brolic one? From, yeah. Yeah. From Brazil? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, So, yeah. I, in that summer session, I actually roomed with him because I he was in the room that we moved into, Cleveland Lake, because they gave it to him during the summer. I was like, nah, but this is my room for, like, the fall so yeah yeah i mean he, we could rock but he gonna have to leave as soon as the you know training camp start he out every day this fool was singing it with the whole brazilian accent and everything <laughs> <laughs> and playing it over and over and over like shout out to andre like i'll find him on facebook but he know he could not tell me that icy was not his jam yo i'm over here stressing that night doing the sun go down and he over here like i'm so i said and i'm like no, turn that shit off what right was now. that accent i don't know but his shit was Kate so <laughs> off. Kate i was so like off. I was like, yeah, that was him. That was a Brazilian trying to sound Southern. That's what that was. <laughs> Yo, that's that's hilarious. Anything else for Zo knows? No, nah, that's that's really it, man. It, it's it was a, that was kind of packed. That was a lot going on. That Jeezy stuff drained all of us. So. Nah, I it did. Good. I think that kind of gets us to our our main topic, which is around reconciliation. And apparently Zo hasn't reconciled with the fact that uh Andre was singing that song all wrong back in December <laughs> 2005. Uh so I guess we haven't had a, a lot of uh, opportunity to let that thing go. Um, but the main question is, as we spoke about, you know, two weeks ago, 2020 is wrapping up, it's coming towards the end. And there are some things that happened to all of us this year that maybe for better, maybe maybe for worse. So uh the first question is around like with it being such a tough year, like how are you planning to maintain whatever positive energy that you've been radiating this year without bringing the bullshit with you? Got to let go and let God detach. Preach. <laughs> but how? <laughs> but how? Like it's easy to say, but how do we do that? Well, that's good. Point. Um, I think it's about prioritizing. You know what is important to you, and the things that you know, the goals that you want, um, and the things that you 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 want to be successful at prioritizing those and working towards those and being focused on that, not allowing outside pressure to deter you. Because I think people uh, mindset starts to change when they start to feel more pressure, when they have uh, elevated levels of stress, when maybe some things aren't going well, they have outside pressure coming into their um, safe space. So when you allow that stuff to come in, I think that can deter you and bring negative energy out of you. But if you stay focused on your goals, stay focused on what's important to you um, and you work towards that, I think that'll help you um, eliminate that negative energy so that you retain positively. And I think ultimately you help you reach your goals. I just gave James the wall with street clothes on and he dunked it. That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody coming to the gym with Tim's on and you like, he ain't gonna know, he ain't gonna do nothing with this. James just came through the backwards dunk. Like, what you what else you got? What else? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's actually like real facts. But I think that like what you spoke about in terms of trying to block our negative energy and trying to carry on and taking the best parts, I think that's a skill that people develop over time in terms of like extracting the silver lining, because there's some people in, in my life that like see negative first, they see mm-hmm. it's in, the negative is in bolder letters. It's the same reason why 
if you have an Instagram post, you can have 13 positive comments, but that one sting, like, but you have the opportunity to reflect and focus on those 13 good, but sometimes that one bad, like, stick mm-hmm. you in the side. I think intentions matter too, right? You have to, like, not be worried about what people are going to think about what you're doing, mm-hmm. right? So when you, That's for example, bar. if, you're, if tough, you're posting though. something or if you're doing something, it's not about the feedback you're looking or um, I can't think of the word that I want to say right now, but it's not about that that uh, acceptance of other people. Mm-hmm. It's about finding out, again, what's important and why you're doing it and the reason behind that. And you drive that. But if you're yeah. doing it for the reason of looking for people to accept you or trying to get feedback from people that is not important to you mm-hmm. and you get that negative feedback, that's going to bring that negative energy out because your mind is not focused on what's important. Mm. All facts. All facts. I think I think in addition to that, in, in terms of not carrying anything, you know, negative into the new seasons, if you will, just being grateful for where you are now, like literally, literally right. taking some time to reflect on where you are now and what you have accomplished, like finding the good uh, in within the process. Right. So like I think about myself and my job, my, my, my nine to five isn't all that I want it to be. But the way I look at it is I'm I'm getting paid to learn. Right. I'm in a brand new industry in the position that I'm in. I had no idea or concept of this industry prior to being in this role. And I'm learning a lot. So even though I'm not exactly where I want to be career wise, it's putting me on the path of being where I want to be career wise. Because so like that's the way I look at it, man. I'm focusing, focusing on what's good about my current situation, really reflecting even small wins. Zoe and I had a conversation earlier this year. He came up to visit me really small conversation but he was like yo you know what's crazy we was talking about he had to get like some tires on the car he was like yo this is the type of thing that like would have stressed me out like several years back like man i gotta get tires on the car now i gotta figure out how to pay for it and it was just a general part of the conversation like he handled something that needed to be handled and that's a win you know what i mean that's growth like I have the money, I have the resources to be able to handle something unexpected that came up. And in the past, I might have had to figure it out. Like, you know what I mean? Like, wait till my next check, whatever the case may be. So just appreciating where you are currently and and finding some contentment in it. This is mad random, but you ever you ever get sick and you be like, damn, I didn't take advantage of the times that I wasn't sick. Or you like your elbow hurt or something. You like, Uh I just been (laughs) walking around, chilling, not even appreciated. I ain't got no ailments. Yeah, Yeah, bro. Sure. I definitely do that when I get sick. I hate having the stuff you know. Being able to breathe is so important to me. You ain't lying. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just want to breathe again, especially when it do that uh, tennis nostril where it go like one side and mm. then like, hours later this side. The worst. I, mean, I never even know I had a name. I just gave it it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was called that either, but it, it just seemed like tennis is like going back and forth. So. Um, yeah, I'm not really good when to answer the question because I don't. I would say I agree. Like I guess what Cleveland said as far as appreciating what what exists now and just taking that. If you have a goal, like James said, don't worry about nothing else. For me, I think I do a decent job trying to stay positive and go through. Because if I wrote down most of the stuff that I deal with on a you regular, sell especially, a book. yeah, especially in the most, uh, I guess, the last year and a half the average person would have probably lost it. So I like how I keep positive energy is have like setting a goal and then everything else gets put on the back burner because I'm focused on that one thing. So only problem is like for my situation, some of the bad energy was affecting that goal, like getting in the way. Yeah. That's where I have a problem where I'm like, but that's the stuff that I'm talking about. And I feel that's the real meat of this conversation is like, when shit ain't good, when it's not good, and you like your toolbox ain't working, like I mentioned, like we talked hey, two hey, weeks my ago. My toolbox always working, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what you talking? Like you talking about? What boy. you talking? <laughs> His toolbox always working. That sea moss, baby. That you macaroon. already know. <laughs> I mean, I'm a yes. believer. In a perfect world, for sure. But in, <laughs> but in this context, sometimes the things that you have gone to that was tried and true. Mm. don't work the way that they used to so uh how you feel about that kev 
I mean, that's an interesting point. I just think that uh, I, I this is the thing, right? I you have to know your piece. You have to know what is a good day like for you. Like, what what are some things that you have to have done for your day to be productive and progressive? And um, you know, I was never a person with a routine. Realistically, I was never really a person who who kind of wanted to be predictable. You know, in in a lot of way. But I realized like having routine centers me, right? gives me balance, so to speak. So when negative energy, so to speak, kind of gets in the way, it throws me off, unfortunately, right? I, I Especially if I care about the situation or the person or whatever it is that, that can kind of get into the way of my peace, it really throws me off. It really like puts me in a bad place where I'm just moody, I'm not in the mood to be productive, you know? So I, I get affected by it. So I guess, how do I move forward? I move forward by, First, you know, I spend days without really talking about the issue, right? Because I recognize that I'm in an emotional state and I don't want to necessarily do anything that's going to be emotional. So I don't, I don't allow myself to react, to, 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 to do anything or say anything, post anything, whatever it is. I just don't give that's myself real, the opportunity. That's real growth to know that you're like, y'all met in an emotional state. I'm not, I don't mm. even want to, to talk sit, about this right to now. To time out himself, right? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Right. Like, Right, because I figure if I sleep on it, if I give some days pass, like this, the logic will make sense for me. Um, I'll come around it. Uh, I'll just have a solution that I can that can I have a better way to address the issue. Um, but going into twenty twenty one, I think anything that I kind of felt like was unlikely or untasteful or not really tasteful, um, you know, I don't hold grudges, man. I really don't. I'm not a person who holds grudges, and I, I think that like, you know, I I can. I, I'm very good at distancing myself from things and, 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 and whatever things that makes me feel really uncomfortable, but I don't hold grudges. I, I, I say it this way. Um, I'm a nice guy, but I definitely, I'm a nice person to myself. If that makes sense. You feel what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah, it's, it's not more, so much. It's not so, yeah. You're, you're kinder to yourself and you're like, it means more to you to not hold a grudge probably than it would be to actually hold one. Yeah, because at the end of the day, I gotta sleep with it. So mm. right, right. Mm. It's just the uh, best, best, best thing I could say. Cause I know it was like more of a a, a question for key takeaway for for our listeners. Nah, nah, I think I think you're going in the right direction. Yeah, I just think that it, all in all, like not holding grudges, um, recognizing is unsettling. Like I had a great conversation with a great brother of mine. You know, what I mean, we we had our we had our, our differences. Um, he reached out to me. We had a great conversation about it. And it was a beautiful thing, like, and I think just kind of like, you know, like being in a place where we can grow as people, we can put our differences aside and whatever it was, whatever we were dealing with, 90% of the time is miscommunication. And that's right. the thing about it, right? It's never anything that anyone intended to say or do. It's right. something that was just misinterpreted or misguided said in a way that wasn't likely. So I, I recognize that. I recognize that in real time though, right? And there's some people yeah. who, who, who don't recognize that in real time and and are our recognition of their emotion and, and that's overpowering in the moment. So yeah. Well two questions for you in that situation, Kev. Not to get too much into too much detail, but number one, did you feel a release after the conversation? And number two, did you even know that, that you had that weight there? Good question. I, I mean the weight, the weight was there light low but it was there because you know somebody you care about you know somebody mm -hmm. you, you know you, you're gonna run into again and see so you know it, it, it the light the weight definitely was on low it was uh, lifted but definitely felt better because you know for me again like although i may not stress about a thing so i think about it now although it's yeah. like compartmentalized somewhere way back where and i i don't, I don't address it anymore I still, I still remember things. Like I still remember mm -hmm. a lot of things. So for me, it's just like once the opportunity came to talk about it, and to, and I was excited. Like I was more excited that the opportunity presented itself. And yeah, yeah. I, whereas I know people who hold that grudge and just put people on a back burner for that. And I was yeah. like, oh, you reached out to me. Now I'm not gonna respond. So I want you to feel that, da, 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 whatever, whatever that is, right? Whatever that child is yeah. to a play. But I was excited to actually have a conversation and actually figure out what it was that you know didn't click for us at the moment, you know, and that was just a growth mm -hmm. thing. And I'm always, I'm always happy to, to grow and to like, you know, I don't really hold the ego. You know, I, I'm, I'm very, very, 
I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in my heart that I have an ego. You know, I, I don't. I feel like I, I come with no ego in so many different facets. But yeah, it was definitely lifted. Definitely felt lighter. Definitely was excited about it. Definitely looked forward to the conversation. Had a conversation. It was a beautiful conversation. And that's just what life is about. Life's never going to yep. be people agree on certain things. So, I, right. I, you know, resolve and and make up whatever it is. So with, with that, Kev, in terms of growing to the point where, not even saying that you were there before, but the point where you are now is holding grudges is not worth it doesn't matter you know it's you you compartmentalize but how many of us here actually either in your previous life or currently still can hold a grudge me <laughs> that's why i ain't say nothing for the none of the last <laughs> ones not I, I don't even I, and so here's funny as kim was talking around thinking like damn it, it, a question pops in my head right so it's one of those things where through the years, I mean, previous life sounded like I was dead and came back, but you know, like, but well, like pre kids, pre marriage, yeah, pre So, like, to me, I've always it's one of those things where I've always it's 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 genetic for me. Like people in my family I can, do that. I, I get mm-hmm. that. I can see yeah. That. Like y'all have been around my family. Y'all seen like they be tight about stuff that happened from like seventy five. Like really, <laughs> like so. To me, it's like, is my surrounding has been the grudge holding. It's part probably passed down genetically. Um, and it's something that I've always like, y'all want to work on. But then every time I say I want to work on it and forgive and not hold grudges, I'm always proving right. Like I'm doing the right thing. Keep holding the grudge. Like send them out of here. Like I don't, I don't know. So it's, it's kind of weird um, in that aspect because it's like I've had countless people say like oh what, what what's the phrase uh forgiveness is for you not them i'm mm-hmm. fine i don't i don't i don't <laughs> i'm oh why do i need to forgive anything i'm i'm living all right i'm having fun with y'all i'm doing what like but that's what? you know the, the, the interesting thing is kev said a word is very important that i can empathize with with his compartmentalizing i hmm. feel like i compartmentalize very well but it's also like are you running from it like are you trying to escape it or are you really dealing with it and then putting it to the side you know what i mean yeah but that's, that's think, a question that was the question like do i am i supposed to suppress it am i suppressing it by that's just- a good point i don't think grudge means forgetting about it you know i think for me when i hear grudge i think about allowing it affect me emotionally ah, and, cha- okay. and, cha- and it changing me based off of a situation that happened right because right, right. You know, like, for example, I don't know, you say you're going to come through, you say you're going to come pick me up, we're supposed to go to a game or something, whatever, and then you just not come, whatever it is, like, whatever, like, whatever you said you were going to do, you didn't do, mm-hmm. I'm not going to now not trust nobody, I'm not going to now mm-hmm. not even not trust you, and maybe, maybe I'm skeptical, but I'm not going to not trust you, or I'm not going to not trust the next person, I think mm-hmm. when you hold a grudge, it ultimately affects you as a person. You know, it's not so much yeah, as about yeah. the the situation because, yeah, you may not even have an opportunity to speak to that person for a couple of years, right? So that's, that's, that's. It's like if that's, you have a grudge, you wear it. Like it's on you. It's wear like it, you, you wear it. it. Yeah. You wear it. I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying, and, and, you know, to Zoe's defense, I know plenty of people who are uh, <laughs> go <laughs> easy, go lucky, yeah. like straight up. Like, you know what I mean, yeah. I, I feel like I'm, I'm straight but up anomaly in, in some spaces, but like for sure, like I'm not saying that you're wrong for that. I think. Some people will say people don't get a second chance to hurt me again or whatever it is. You they know come what I mean? with the phrases. Yeah. I get that. I 100% get that. I just personally, for me, I don't hold grudges because low key, I'm empathetic. And I also know how people are. I know people aren't perfect. I know people just do mm-hmm. dumb, reckless things that yeah. may not have made sense at the moment for them. And it's whatever. You know what I mean? I can, I can move yeah. on from that, you know? You can forgive somebody. That doesn't mean they have to get their spot back. And that doesn't mean they have sure. to be in the same See, position. that's the sure. question I was that, leading to. Like, yeah, 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 is sure. that part of the grudge holding where it's like... No, no, no. Because no, no, they, 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 could be, no, they could be no, no. demoted. They could be okay. demoted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You okay. definitely yeah. can Because to me, people are like, are oh, you still holding the grudge? Like, No, you know it's, it's not holding the grudge. It's just <laughs> becoming smarter. Like, my... Yeah, you my forget, think, but you don't forget type thing. I think there's a range, too. There's a range. There's a range because there's a lot of... Because I can even speak about us. There's a lot of growth... 
even from where we are now, like mm-hmm. none of us are perfect. So we can, we can all hold a grudge or, mm-hmm. or not hold a grudge. So there's, but there's growth in where we are. So even with Zoe, Zoe, you don't hold a grudge like you used to. Zoe, I think you're in this space where you like, you'll forgive but won't forget. Like Zoe is, is you're super empathetic, but like, you're not going to, you're not going to be like, I know he still owe me money. Like I, I'm not gonna give him money again. See, this is the thing. I think Zoe don't owe Zo no money. Forget. Zo, I think Zoe like I, yeah, I think I think Zoe will forgive you, but he's never gonna forget you. Forget it. And he he will jokingly remind you. Yo. He'll jokingly yeah. remind you. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you like, yeah, he's like oh, we cool, talking about money, huh? Yeah, that's funny yeah. game. Mm-hmm. That's that, funny but game. that's also the taste. Like Var, you Var, you kind of alluded to why I'm like that, right? So that's the thing where Kev said, "Does it change your behavior, right, or who, you, sort of like who you are? You become somebody else you're not trusting." But my question is like, am I? Is that change of who you are? Is that like always who you've been, or is that who you? Mm. Is that part of the group? Too? Like, are you? Yeah, you know I mean, I that's, like that's a good. Questions. That's a good question. I think. I think if you honor the fact that if somebody did you not wrong, but like, all right, so let's say that you you and somebody else had a fallen out and you don't put them in their in their spot as they were before, that's not something that you did. If you accept them back, I think that's a lot of growth on your part. You're like, nah, like we we got history, you're not throwing anything out the window, but you'd be a fool to think you you second in command right now. Like you know fool. I mean? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I'm I'm happy to have you back, but like some trust probably was eroded and yeah. that kind of has to be built, but you're not throwing the person away, you know? Yeah. I don't throw people, I don't, I don't throw the whole pe- person away. Like, I really don't, I throw like an arm away, right? Because like, <laughs> what ends up happening, <laughs> you could still survive, but I got an arm. Right. You know yeah. <laughs> but funny thing is like, somebody called me that been calling y'all probably every so often, just, mm-hmm. just check, you know, and you reached out asking me to put him on, on with somebody that he needed for something i'm like mm-hmm. how, how can i do that bro like we still right. have unresolved issues right. now yep. me holding a grudge would be me not even answering the phone to begin with Facts. you know what i mean that's that's holding the grudge and that's kind of like being bad that's a great right? example that's a great but example i, I answer mm-hmm. the phone just just to check to see what's going on and no i can't deliver that you know what I mean? And I'm gonna tell because you why. the love, you know what I'm because the love, the love is the love is still there still for the there, history. Yeah, but it's course. not. But like, but currently your spot is it's your spot. Not, ain't the, you it ain't your spot that. no more. Yeah, and right. I tell them like you don't even have that kind of leverage. I, I was straight up like you don't have that kind of leverage to do that. Like you know what I mean? Right. Like to just come and call out of the blue and ask for a favor. Like you don't hold that kind of power yo. No more, that's you know ill. That's, that's the politics. The politics of friendship is is just like that because I think. All of us, like we don't talk to each other, even before this podcast, none of us talk to each other every day, right? Mm-hmm. But if there was months, like, it would be months before me and Cleveland would talk just because of, of life. It'd be like four or five months. We get on the phone and chopping for like an hour and a half. Like, damn, this is crazy. Like, it's like that synergy, but everybody don't have that luxury. Mm-hmm. And, but I think people may think they had that luxury. They can kind of just dip in and out. Like, nah, bro, we we not we not that fly. Like, you can't just yeah. They're gonna st- hit the reset. Like, we gonna start from back then. Like, nah. So here's the here's a here's a wrench in the system. So a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, the dynamics of people in the positions and this and the third, is a lot of friendship. Now, what happens when it's family and they are oh. technically related? So their position is something that is genetically. A position, you know what I mean? See? Whether it's your mother, your father, the cousin, or something like that. Like that is a that's that's the world that I come from, where it's like, see, yeah, see, see, not. I have a different perspective, <laughs> and I think we might be split because some of us here are like super family oriented. Ah, mm-hmm. y'all more my family than than a lot of my family. And that's mm-hmm. that's kind of how I hold it. So, mm-hmm. like, blood couldn't make us thicker, us five. Like, it's it's mm-hmm. that's just how I, I yeah. operate. But but I know Zoe how how tight and how you were born to be tight with your family. Like you have cousins who are like your brothers. So Correct. like so and, and your loyalty run deep. So I can imagine how that might be tough for you. But I can probably like do without a cousin. <laughs> 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 Yo, it's kind of like the concept of the concept of with family. It's like this is somebody who I have to who has done me wrong or something. And I have to see them on a consistent basis. So I have to deal with them, whether it's just at Thanksgiving or whatever. And I've had a situation like that. They weren't family, but this is somebody that I still have to have interaction with, even though they did something dead wrong. For me, the forgiveness came in because like Kev said, like 
I got sick of every time I had an interaction with this person, it stole my joy for the entire day. Like I, I couldn't, I didn't want to do nothing. Me. Like I was just, it, yeah, it drained me. So that's why I was like, yo, I have to learn to forgive this person just so that they don't have that power over me anymore. I don't want to have a conversation. But, but with what them. is it that you say to yourself that make you forgive? Like they don't know no better. They slow. Like no, honestly, you- it, it is, it, it is a bit of empathy. It's literally like, whatever you, yeah you they just dumb as hell sense. they don't get it they dumb Yo, as hell honestly when it's when it comes to a point where it's like you, it doesn't make sense for you to still be angry or it doesn't make sense for you to still be coming at me that way it's like you got to consider like that person has gone through something else that has nothing to do with me that's causing them to act towards me in this this super negative and like volatile way and that's what I had to accept. And I had to accept that I'm never going to get an apology from this person. They will never see the past in, in the same way as me. And then my interactions with them had to change because I heard somebody say, like, the way you interact with an adversary determines whether or not they become an enemy. Like, you got to leave them with some integrity, even when they push in those buttons. That's the hardest thing to do. Like, when they start pushing those buttons that they know you get you going, it's like you want to go to that level. But if you do that, you're now creating a, a lifetime enemy instead of just having, like, a an adversary. And- and that's yeah, where it gets and tough. Something, for sure. something else is personal evolution doesn't run parallel. No. You, right? could, you ain't lying, you bro. Could, you could be. <laughs> and age don't you, mean shit. It don't. You could be. You Maturity could be going eighty five. You could be going eighty five, and they could be going forty, and they coasting. They, they, they're checking out the sites or twenty, mm-hmm. but that per- personal evolution is not run parallel. Yeah, them. You on that turnpike? They in the school zone. <laughs> <laughs> like, but I would say this. See, that's the part where you describe it. Like, that's the part where why I, I guess I am the way I am, and I'm like each. And I learned from y'all because Var said it earlier. It's like the way I am is like I go hard for people. I'm loyal, whatever. So when they do that little hiccup, to me, I take it personal. Like, yo, you did that shit on purpose because you uh, know me. So yeah, even though, I like, you, I agree with Cleveland, where it made it, it probably doesn't. Ninety percent of it don't have nothing to do with me. I'm just the person in the way, like, mm-hmm. of the nonsense for the day mm-hmm. or whatever. But and but but like the thing about you, back. Zoe, the thing about you is that you, if you were them. You will push that to the side, do what's needed to do for them, and go a little bit above. And that's the that's thing that, that 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 makes you like that makes you loyal, but it also makes you like a target. Not a target, target, but like I know it's, it's it's easier for you to be like the fuck because what will stop them will not stop you. If you, if it's something you want to do something for somebody, yeah, like yeah. so if like speaking of Kev's example, if we're going to a game and there's some circumstances where it's like somebody got a flat tire, so they can't pick Kev up, right? If that was Zoe, Zoe would get a flat tire, go to AAA, call Kev, still scoop Kev, and go to the game, even if you missed the first half of the game. Or That's make a plan for what... somebody to get Kev so he don't got to worry about it. And yeah. meet us there. And, <laughs> yeah. so, so, I'll be right there, yo. <laughs> so, but that extra level of, of care and love – most people can't match that. Most people they're Not thinking about close. their flat tire. It's like, am I tired? Well, what you want me to do? Yeah, that's like, why I sell myself short because it's like you're giving you're giving expectations for people. You can't control it. Goes to our serenity pr- prayer. Control what like you right. can control, like and mm. knowing the difference. I can't control other people's actions or their thought process. Although in my head, I'm like, nah, yo, you thought about that before you did that. Yeah, like, like <laughs> you did that dumb did. shit. Like you did. Yeah. Um, you, That's the you thing. Had, the like, lack of thinking. The lack of thinking. Is sometimes sometimes it's it's the lack of thinking for sure. It's more emotional, and, yeah. and that's why. And that's the thing about it, right? For me, and that's why I, I can't take it personally because it's never logical. It's never really a full person's thought. It's unless it's like Facts. thought about strategically planned to, to to harm. Then it's kind of yeah. a different scenario. But in most cases, people are just like are not in control of their emotion. Unfortunately, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So. Yeah. But Cleveland says some good point that I kind of want to, to, to touch on, but um, I can't remember it now. But it, it was just it was just good to hear like some of the things that people said um, in terms of just knowing how to like let it go. And well, that's the thing. I think it's like after you forgive someone, but if they continue to do the same stuff, right? You you can forgive them, meaning like I'm not going to let this impact me anymore. But it would be unwise to like yeah. establish something with them, and they're just as close as they were before. 
Because then you're setting yourself up for failure. Like, if I keep loaning you $10, you say you're going to give it to me, on, to me on payday and you never give it back to me, I'm not loaning you $10 to payday. <laughs> yeah. You're the fool. Do that. You're the fool. Like, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm cool. I'm cool that I gave you that yeah. money and it, it doesn't bother me anymore that you didn't pay me back. But at the same time, I'm not going to give you more. Yeah, I like, can't do that. You got to, you got to, Accept that stiff arm, like, and that's where people try to make you feel guilty, like, oh, you you holding a grudge, you 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 can't forgive me. Nah, I do forgive you. I'm just not going to do the same thing mm -hmm. that led us to this point where I, I couldn't yeah. stand you. Well, yeah, James, when, when you, James, when you gave Elon Musk that seed money to start Tesla, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure if you got it back or not. Man, yet, listen, man. I will hold a major grudge, boy. Straight up, right? You ain't right. Uh, if now, you that money back, James, you call me. We be right there. <laughs> Go ahead, Kev. But yeah, when you said about family, and I know mm -hmm. it's the thing because I, you know, it's it's interesting. Like my 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 intermediate family is probably like the people that I have really unconditional love for. Meaning, like there's nothing that they could do, like they could they could push me in the wrong direction, but like I've practiced my unconditional love on my actual family, mm -hmm. so I kind of know. Mm -hmm. That I'm capable of doing that. I know I know what I'm capable of doing in that way because I actually practice that. But right. it goes back to saying what Cleve is saying when when you're saying like you know you'll be not wise to repeat put yourself in that same situation. It's kind of that, right? It's kind of like and it's, it's actually funny because there was a situation where I lent somebody some money for something um, didn't work out and they they thought that it was just okay to ask again as if like. And I'll wait for it. I, 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 I'm, I'm cool to the point where, like, I may not, I'm not going to make it a thing. I'm not going to get upset because I know things happen. But the moment you try to ask me is the moment I, I, I take that opportunity to let you know, bro. Like, like that's, <laughs> that's my way at that mm -hmm. moment to let you know that this is how I really feel. You know what I'm saying? Like, not Yo, in a bad the, way. The second time, the second time, do you look at it as disrespect, low key? For sure, I feel that way, but I don't yeah, take it yeah. that way. I feel like, like bro, you're like that's when like now, nah, bro, you're tripping for asking right now. Like type of vibe comes out, you know what I mean? Now it's like, like I did you a favor. I did you a favor by by, by not bringing up the first by one. Not oh, there you. That's where I feel like it's intentional because Kev, like like yo, you knew as you was about to say that sentence, you was like, I hope this nigga don't remember that over the first time. <laughs> now that's the let crazy me part. Just, let me like let me just try it. Like nah, yeah, man. It's just, but family though is like cousins happen. Listen, I love my cousins, but it's they get thrown away too. I throw those bodies <laughs> out. If, if they, <laughs> like straight up, like and I know love lost to anybody, but it's just like who you knows? Like listen, man, like we're all grown up now, and yeah, responsibilities man. get 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 really fine and and and, and focus as you get older. So I can't really. I'm not as broad as I used to be with my yeah. with, with 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 things, right? So. Right. Like how many times? <laughs> how many times have 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 I brought a cousin around? I've never, never seen any. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm right. I'm processing. I think that's I can't crazy because Bar is true what he said. Like, yo, I've seen everybody on here cousin at some point besides Bar. I never met y'all. See like my sister. Y'all see my dad. Y'all see my mom. That's yeah. that's it. Mm -hmm. And occasionally that, with them two couple of friends that came up that one time. Oh yeah, back in the yeah. day. But like. Yeah. But yeah, like I keep it, I keep it like that. But I think it's number one, it's a testament to the love I have for y'all. And, and like, I don't, I didn't need friends when I came to California. Like it was tough. Cause you know, you got some day to day people, but like nobody can compete with y'all. Like, it's not even like, it's not even the thing. So, but when it comes to actually building relationships, my dad and my mom used to tell me all the time, I've been blessed. So I've always had really good friends. So when you mm -hmm. have to not replicate that cycle or, but when you have to have other people, I can't put anybody out here in a solid slot. Like I mm -hmm. can't with y'all. Right. So if there was somebody out here that like my expectations were like lost on, it's like, I could throw you back in the, in the river. It's like, uh, damn, this didn't work out. But like my heart wasn't in it. You feel what yeah. I'm saying? So, I mean, how you feel about that Cleveland Same. being away from home, right? Same exact thing, bro. I, my my dad, um, he still talks about this. When y'all came to the room uh, prior to the to the wedding, I was getting ready for the wedding. Well, y'all was in the room and uh, we was just talking like we were just having conversations about what we experienced in college, what we want to do in the future. 
And he just sat back. He was like, yo, I'm just so impressed by your friends. He was like, all of them are so smart. All of them are so polite. He was like, you have a really good, solid group of friends. And I honestly felt the same way moving here. It was like, it's hard to make new friends, man. You can't really vibe with everybody like that. Like you can't really even have real conversations with people. I remember it as one person and I was like, all right, well, maybe we can be cool. And then he lost me right away because as he was talking to me, he was like, well, wait, wait, one moment. I'm about to drop some knowledge. I'm like, first of all, who says drop knowledge? <laughs> yeah. Second of all, like, right. I'm like, yo, like you just like you the smartest person ever. So it just threw hold me this, off. Hold this gym right quick while I <laughs> right. I'm about to I'm about to drop some knowledge. I'm like, bro. But like, so that's the thing, like it's it's hard to replace. One thing I, I kind of re- like regret a little bit, like is I felt like I didn't take full advantage when I was still in Jersey. Like I think about that all the mm-hmm. time because for me, it was like I had a Maya, she was young. And it was like a lot of times I didn't really, I didn't really know, like everybody have kids. I'm like, you know what I mean? They want the baby running around at this joint. I'm gonna just chill home. Like, you we know, nobody, care. of we course I know care. that now, but like, that's what I, that's, that's where my head was at that point in time. Like, yo, like, you know I mean, they just try and drink, they try and chill. They just try to cut up. They might not want me there with the baby running around. And I do regret that, like that period, I was saying no a lot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they'd be like, oh, we having a cookout. I'm like, nah. We going here nah no nah, nah, i'm not going so mm. now i like regret it but you know it's it's cool to have this platform where we can all still come together and then you never know what the future holds man maybe i will move back to jersey and and have that time to spend with y'all again but yeah man nobody's really <laughs> nobody's really getting close up here how about well, you kev i, I you, will you, say you out of town oh, go ahead kev yeah i about to say kev you yeah you and both uh, but you kind of out of town but like that's kind of like old stomping ground yeah somewhere. it's interesting but like I, i've been kind of reconnect with old friends and it's been interesting learning people because you know I feel like I'm not the same person that I was when I was first here you know I'm completely right. not you got to think about it. I done became a whole Greek came old married I, it's like so many mm-hmm. things changed in my life after I left the city and when I came back into the city you know and you know like I don't really like talk like this all the time but like you know, I feel like I've seen a lot of things, you know, I feel like I kind of like see some things in this world where kind of gave me different perspectives on a lot. So, you know, when I come back and you come back to an environment where people that you kind of left here was here, you think about I left here in 08-ish, right? So that's almost 12 years. So like a lot of people who, who kind of still been here for like almost 12, what was that? That's about 12, right? 12 years, yeah. Yep, 12, yep. So uh, it's, it's changed, right? I've changed and I think with, one of the most powerful things that I'll say is that uh, as much as I've changed, like the people closest to me have changed with me, right? And mm, I think that's yeah. that's the most powerful testimony to me. It's just like, yeah, I grew and I've changed and I have different perspectives on life, but like, like you all haven't, y'all let me be me, even though I'm not who I was when I was in 2009, you feel what I'm saying? Right. Like, and that's the beauty of it for me, just like to recognize that you can you can evolve, you can adapt, the people around you like learn to grow with you, right? And and that's more testament to me than time, right? I think time kind of hinders relationships from growing sometimes because you know someone may have their own way of thinking, you have your own way of thinking, and, and timing just doesn't this doesn't kind of mesh together well, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um yeah, I mean, just to say the least, like, I, I was just having this conversation not too long, and I'll keep it short, but I said to myself, man, I'm really blessed to have the people that I have around me. Like, the people that really love me and know me, I'm super blessed for that. I, I'm super thankful for that because, mm-hmm. you know, you don't know that until you you start, like, navigating your space, and then you start running into people that just don't like you for who you yeah, are, right, you know what I'm saying? Right, so it was kind of right. like, oh. Or don't grow yeah. at the same rate that you do. You kind of yeah. outgrow them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would say my parents have always said that about y'all. Like, yo, your friends have made their like ex- extra sons. <laughs> like, 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 yo, like I always love when they come over and they like they talk directly to y'all. Like it's not like mm-hmm. a you know what I mean so what's going on? Tell me about this person. Who you dating now? What yeah, I mean, even prior to hey yo, hey yo, relax. Home. Who you dating? Not now? you I know specifically. That was a shot. That was a shot. A little See, bit of a jab. No, I was saying prior to us getting married, but hey, right now you just happen to fit that criteria. That's all. <laughs> I'm a possible. But um, <laughs> but like I would say, I'm gonna tell y'all a secret, right? 
So I was I sabotaged James leaving because I was like, nah, nigga, you're not gonna leave me dolo. Kev gone, <laughs> Var gone, Fever gone. You ain't Made going. Made me feel bad. No, no, no. I said, damn, what do I do to everybody? Like, I'm like that damn bad. Everybody keep rolling up. I'm like, yo, James leaving, Chris leave. I'm I'm wilding. Like, I'm I'm doing something different. Like, then it's you and Reek. You, Reek, and Frank left. That's it. If Reek don't even come out the house. You gotta drag him out. I gotta call him three times, and then he be like, "All right, Zoe call me three times. Maybe I'll call him back." <laughs> shout, out, shout, shout out, shout out, to Reek though, man. Shout, shout out second, to Reek, second, second born. Yes, oh, yeah. OJ, yeah, congratulations, I mean, uh, OG Reek, not uh, Shereek. Shout out to Shereek too, but OG yes. Reek, yeah. Mr. Shabazz. And hey, we got a couple. We got a couple uh, double names. You got two Tyrese. Yeah, two Tyrese. Yeah, yeah. two Reeks. Yeah, double two. names. But yeah, I, I sabotaged said, James. Nope, not going. Sorry. I, I called the company like, y'all got to offer him some more money instead. <laughs> I'm good. <giving fun. laughs> Yo, but in the interest, in the interest of time, we got to wrap up this, this, uh, this segment. I also want to call out that James said that if it ain't about the money, I ain't talking about this shit. James been quiet for the last hour. Uh, <laughs> no, man. It's, it's not that. It's just, I mean, because I get everything and I was going to talk about a story in terms of like growth. And, you know, when you talk about you, you going 80 miles an hour and other person going 20, like when mm-hmm. I said that is that that's like a story that happened to me from uh, when I was in high school, freshman year, I was really cool with something. This is not like, you know, you guys know the people like my friends from back home that I've been cool with basically mm-hmm. all my life. But uh, this was somebody else who I got real cool with playing football freshman high school year. And, um, we were we were just we were just kicking it, so we kind of grew. And I'm like, all right, this is what I kick kick it with, spend the night, you know, the this and that. And one thing I never really liked was I can't be around people, especially at that age, you know, people who smoke in general. I just this couldn't is, do this it. In fact, people, James right? hates this shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. Even till I mean, now it, it is what it is. You know what I mean? But you don't I like still it. Don't do any type of smoke. You know, I don't. So I, I mean, but I just couldn't be around it. So I was like, you know, I kind of told him, like, yo, listen, man, this is not, this is not cool, bro. You got to let that go. Like the people you starting to hang around with smoking this and that, it's, it's just not cool. Just let that part go. You know what I mean? We're we going to be cool this and that, but he never let it go. And I was just like, I'm out. Like, just, just like that. Just lost a friend, basically. James was like, it's me or the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> it's me or the drugs. <laughs> Damn, you made me sound terrible just now, bro. Right. You Whoa. sounded like Blake, man. He well, gave I'm trying to be ultimate. like, you know, growth. <laughs> And, and show how it's, you know, it's just that simple to walk away from a situation. But I mean, lo and behold, I am where I am and he is where he's at, which is. <clears throat> nah, son, that's a, but I think we've, we've addressed like James, like, I think you, I swear you, I swear, yo, I'm not saying you should go. This is not a plug for you to go. But if you went to therapy, son, you would be a millionaire. Like, yo, yo your, your process of thinking, son, is like light years ahead. But I don't know if you know that you do things that a lot of people just don't do or can't do. Like your process for you to be fucking 14 and be like, you know what? I don't like the way that, that cigarette smells. I'm cutting you off. Like <laughs> it ain't that it was, easy. It was sick of weed. That was weed. Sick of weed, my fault. It was yeah, it, I mean it was a little way. bit of everything. Yeah, I was about to say. Oh, was, my fault. Like he, he belong he belong in Oregon because they they're yeah. getting it off in Oregon right well, now. Word well, up. I mean, right? I like Who cigarettes and weed crazy. and black and miles and like it was, you know, that's what I mean by a little bit of everything. But I just couldn't be around that. Cool. that. Yeah. Hey, Black and Mild, if you look, if you need somebody, I mean, we're looking for sponsors. So <laughs> I don't want backwoods. I don't want yeah, the James, we just make sure James don't do the read. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we head out on this topic, uh, I do want to get the chance for you all to. You have a choice. Let's just talk about our favorite moments from season one. Just one thing. And we're going to wrap up and give it over to Kev for Hint of Health. Man, my favorite still from that uh, the last episode, you try to throw yams out and we came at that net. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Yo, was... The people, the yeah, people that was stand with y'all. The people stand with y'all. Yo, they it's do. crazy, bro. Uh, like, there's no way. I don't think we had an uh, episode like that where everybody responded to one thing right away. And it was in unison. Same reaction. I don't yes. like it. Yeah. <laughs> Letting y'all know that shit right now. I don't like it. That's crazy. Man, there's so many moments. My favorite moment from season one is uh Kev actually said something a few times during the season that like really helped me. And it was be be confident in your best. Like just be confident mm. in your best work. Yo, that's empowering. Like trust, man. trust your hard work. Yeah, like trust your hard work. Because 
like a lot of times you're in positions where like you don't really know how you're measuring up in someone else's eyes like you don't know how they're Mm -hmm. perceiving what you're doing and just going in there and knowing like yo this is this is me this is my best work I'm going to stand firm on that that's really empowering so I think I think that concept that Kev presented this season was a is my favorite moment I like that uh my the one I go to is how y'all all met y'all ladies in the Let's Get Married episode, like how y'all decided oh, yeah. that these are the women that you were going to decide to spend the rest of your life with. Very mm-hmm. inspiring, yo. Something else I think we take for granted is the fact that y'all four are married. Like we joke around, we reflect on a lot of our personal journeys, but like y'all have a real story to tell with, you know, your connection with your with your ladies and and your wives and things of that nature. So I think hearing more about that is always something that brings me joy. So I think that Let's Get Married episode was pretty dope and like hearing the origin stories of how y'all all connected. Mm, I remember that episode. I would say mine was probably the Urkel Effect joint. And <laughs> it was just funny to me, like as far as laughter. Definitely, I agree with James though. I think that was the first time with that yams where we all almost jumped through the screen. <laughs> right. I was like, what? <laughs> So that, that was, yeah, that, that was, was the best funny. reaction. But I think like as a whole episode was like jokes and, and, and just, I think cause it, it was, it was humbling. Like you could tell your humble experience of how you, we all liked somebody and got rejected and this, that, and the third, yeah. mm-hmm. it was, it kind of exposed us. Um, and, and that then, Urkel episode is episode eight for the record. Episode yes, eight. Yes, the Urkel and the effect. let's get married, the let's get married episode is episode five. Okay. Yeah, and and then uh, twenty twenty four was uh twenty four was the yams are trash. What is getting cut? Yep. Yes, yams are trash. Terrible. Was getting, <laughs> so, but yeah, that and my story that Var uh was a part of that blind date I went on. Man, so like he he witnessed it. it. Cleveland witnessed it. Y'all y'all witnessed that. Cause to me, the more I think about that situation, the funnier it is to me and how crazy it was. <laughs> So that I think that episode was like very very interesting. To me. me, it was the episode two, which was uh, "Dear Black Women." Ah, uh, mm. yeah, we talked. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. We that's talked, a fan favorite. Yeah, we talked about how we can do better with protecting black women, and um, right. it was good, man. I remember like we talked about it. I remember we talked about just some things that black women are dealing with, like mm-hmm. fibroids, and I remember like just it Yo, being a major- conversation. Mm-hmm. Major shouts. I still get people that be like, y'all talk about fibroids. I'm like, it's my man Kev. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it, was, it was us, but, I, you know, but um, it was my favorite because it showed our diversity, showed that like we were, we, we were making an impact through our voice. And I felt that at that time. I felt like this is our purpose. This is what we're here to do. And, and I know we have fun all the time and I'm, and I'm all for that. And I think that's valuable. And I just think that it shows our versatility to be able to like really have real heart to heart conversations that really mean something to people, um, especially the people that we know that we know very closely. And um, that's when I knew like we we were really talented. That's when I knew our context was kind of like you know solid yeah. in that way. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Dear Black Women still gets a lot of love. It definitely still gets. A lot. I feel like when people hear about us, the title kind of grabs them and they kind of start there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they should start at episode one vulnerability. We kind of body vulnerability too. If you go back to listen to it, it's like mm-hmm. you'd be trying to figure it out, but that was kind of all right. But but dear black women is definitely the one that people gravitate first. Um now we're gonna give it over to my man KV for hint of health. Uh so for today's segment, hints of health, uh today's uh feature segment is called non-GMO. So for a non-GMO segment, we want to just kind of like divulge and defunct any myths that that may linger around the health space. Given the idea that we're around the holiday season, you know, I know after this, you guys are probably here, there's after Thanksgiving day, but just kind of moving forward into the new year, into the Christmas day, into, into the new years, just thinking about some things to keep in mind. So, you know, many supposed holiday hazards are like at a, um, a high tempered amount of like celebration, you know, like one of the myths that I'm in the bulge right now, sugar makes kids hyperactive. Right. So there's have been more studies to show that people think that like st- uh, sugar makes kids super hyperactive. Um, there was a study that showed that in uh, Indiana University, shout out to the uh, Alpha chapter, uh, mm-hmm. um, that all of which show there's no link between sugar and hyperactivity. Even kids are like, like mm. 
it's interesting. Like, and I thought I was kind of like, you know, I think kids have natural energy um, in, in a lot of it, actually. But, you know, kind of just like reading this research, you kind of just kind of try to point out the idea that um, it's not sugar sensitivity as much as it could be like an attention deficient disorder, essentially. So mm-hmm. you're trying to like correlate the idea that it's not sugar. Um, sometimes it could be something deeper than sugar. Uh, so <laughs> raise your kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, myth two, suicide increases over the holiday. Um, the weather's woeful, right? Relatives are rude and melancholy moves abound, but contrary to what people think, suicide is actually more common around the world during times of the year that are warmer and sunnier. So the holidays aren't the only time when people associate suicide. I think that's because of, of the family and and then you really have, if you're in a bad situation, I think depression and mentally that uh, you start to reflect on the things you don't have. And I think people associate the su- holidays and suicide rates. And there were some like things to kind of go around to say that, um, you know, there was a conductive study in the US that showed that holidays, including Christmas, the 4th of July and birthdays are not preferred times to take one's life. So people don't do that around the holidays. They do it around nice weather. Um, why is <laughs> that something that I want? To- yeah, it is. Um, I'm gonna do two more. Eating at night makes you fat. While eating late night night has been associated with obesity, midnight munchie does not c- uh, cause obesity. Um, you should be afraid to have that midnight snack anymore because it's not so much about like eating late before you go to sleep. It's it's how your body stores the energy and what do you do with it the next day. So there was an article that was citing several studies, um, mm-hmm. and I'll get you guys the sources that suggest that you know the result of too many calories overall are not just the holiday treats. Um, um, are not just like, you know, just not the thing about eating it. And then the next day, if you continue the behavior, then obviously you can like kind of put yourself into the weight gain category. But the, another thing I want to kind of mention under this category is create a heavy, a creative behavior that's sustainable for the holiday. Point, great example is the other day, my wife, I'm probably going to put her on blast street. She hasn't worked out in a month or so, maybe more. <laughs> and, um, but then what's funny about that is that you realize that people are really challenged when they haven't really been physically active in a long time. It's like it's it's in a coma type of vibe. Like she she just can't she just can't do it. It's like not that she can't do it. It's just that you got to get motivated, and then you start thinking about what you're gonna do, and you start thinking about how hard it's gonna be, and you start thinking about the last time you went, and you start comparing, man. I struggled to do that and I'm definitely going to struggle. So you start thinking about all the, the wrong that's going to happen. The best advice is go and spend 10 to 15 minutes there. Just practice getting into the habit of just mm. going, right? Just mm-hmm. show up. Don't, don't do anything. Stretch, act like you're doing something and then walk right out, right? But, but the, <laughs> the, idea, the idea is just driving there or walking there or whatever it is. It's like you have to create, you have to really like reprogram the behavior to move in the direction that you want. And the only way to do that is to motivate yourself, right? And not scare yourself. So don't motive, don't, don't demotivate yourself thinking about all the reps you're going to have to do to make up for lost time. No, motivate yourself just by showing up and then do something, show for 15 minutes, next day show for 25, 35, and then kind of like slow, slow walk yourself back. Small into steps. Small steps, really mm-hmm. take small steps. You know, something that we want to leave people with is going into the holiday is really start slow. Don't do, don't just do nothing at all as the holiday approaches, you know, calories are going to be increasing given like this, just the festivities that's going to happen. Just create yourself a habit. So after the holidays, you're already kind of like took, took a stride and you're already moving in the direction that you want to move and enjoy, enjoy the holidays and be safe. I think that uh, midnight snacking doesn't cause obesity is going to be a big hit for folks who uh, <laughs> I right. eat midnight snacks all the time, so... Yeah. But 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 yo, something as simple as yo, if you have a system in place, you can snack at snack at nighttime. But like tomorrow, you know, you're gonna get your workout in, but not killing yourself. Just having that routine to like, mm-hmm. just do what you're gonna do. But anyway. see, people are gonna do half of that bar. They're gonna eat the midnight snack and say, "Kev, I can eat the midnight snack." <laughs> no, I, 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 what, what I right? said was, I said, I said, eat the midnight snack. No, I know what you said. Something. I'm telling you what they gonna say. They gonna say that you said it was okay. I can eat this. Kev said I can eat the midnight snack, and then he Kev also said, said that you're in a coma if you ain't work out. At this point, you're a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you should eat a vegetable. I don't know. Like <laughs> you a sweet potato. You a yam. Nobody likes yams. Anyway, oh, here you go. <laughs> oh boy. 
Um, we did have one question before we wrap up for season one, which is uh, around the stock market. So, uh, James, go ahead and take it away. Got you. So um, today at the close of the uh, the bell, the Dow Jones um, industrial average uh, hit a new milestone, uh, which ended over 30,000 points. So 30 back bands. in February, 30 bands. So back in February, <laughs> and this kind of give you an idea, it was like teetering to almost hitting that mark. And then boom, coronavirus hit, uncertainty hit. People didn't know what the future uh, what was going to happen to the economy. So then it, it, it tanked. It went from almost 30,000 points to under 19,000 points. Uh, people lost a ton of money in their portfolios because of that. Um, and it all is driven by uh, what people predict or anticipate the future is going to be. So uncertainty in the future, uh, the stock market doesn't do well. Uh, but when you have some type of certainty, when you have some type of stability, uh, what's going on within the U.S. Um, at its highest power, most importantly, then you have more certainty and people have more trust in the market, more trust in the economy. Um, and more trust as to that things will get better. So they start investing now so that when things do get better, they get better returns. So that's why you kind of seeing that push and that surge because the current president actually told his aides that they need to now cooperate or start cooperating with President-elect Biden uh, so that he can now work on the future. So you combine that with the potential of a COVID vaccine that's going to hit the market um, the end of December, most likely, and then get out to more people by the end of the first quarter of next year. Uh, people really want to get into the market. So you do it now and then you can kind of see potential returns a couple months from now, a year from now. So that's kind of why you see the market surging a little bit right now. And that's in direct response to Donald Trump being uh, officially ousted as president. Essentially, yes. Evicted, finally. Because Yo, when, you have, when you have Trump saying that uh, there was voter fraud and he's trying to challenge everything and the GSA is not signing the paperwork for the transition team to start working on things, it puts that transition team behind. So they can't physically do anything if that's not signed until January 20th, literally, no matter what. And if that's the case, then we don't know what the future holds because they have no data as to what's going on with the coronavirus. So um, now they have to get that data. And Kev can tell you this. When you get data, you just don't know what's happening. You then have to study the data it. to truly get what's going on to then devise a plan as to solve whatever problems are out there, which would take a month or so. So now that they're cooperating, investors have a little bit more um, courage as to what's going to happen in the future. And they think that it's going to be good. And the economy is going to reopen. And also Biden said, came out flat out, said that I'm not shutting down the economy. Uh, that's also a, a good indicator yeah, sure for investors. That's a vote of confidence. People want to hear that. Thank you for that. Because I always wonder, like, why did why it go up so crazy just because there's a new president? But now and we know. Just to let you guys know, Tesla's been holding me down. Jump in that real hey, quick. Yo, I, I actually <laughs> wanted to, I want you to share about the presidential transfer. I didn't want you to share about what's going on with Tesla. Cause just want to throw that out there, man. Just, you know, I don't get paid just... till black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. I mean, it's, it's been doing pretty well. Um, even when the market uh, was going down a little bit, Tesla was still going up. Uh, so that's well, kind of like the sexy stock right now. Well, I, I should make sure I should invest in some, Tesla stock so I can flip that and put it down on a down payment for a Tesla <laughs> next year. Um, but yeah, thank y'all. So as we wrap up season one, we had a lot, a lot of great, great moments. We can't wait to give you more and more content for season two, um, bigger and better, more interactive. We want to hear from you. Please follow us on Instagram, juxtaposition.pod. Um, on Instagram and also check out our videos on YouTube, juxtaposition.pod on YouTube as well. But until then, we will give it over to Zoe for the serenity prayer. So I definitely want to say thank y'all for all tuning in this first season um, to the Juxtaposition podcast. Uh, we greatly appreciate your love and support and never ever forget as you go forward into the new year, into the holiday season, especially if you're dealing with family that you can't stand, you mm. must uh, ask God to grant you the serenity to accept the things that you cannot change 
the courage to change the things that you can and the wisdom to know the difference between the two. Amen. And with that, Amen. And with that we'll see y'all next year, 2021. Love, peace, peace and soul. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs>